Dear Party Secretary, Mr. Bo Xilai, dear Madam Patricia Francis, ladies and gentlemen, dear friends, it is my pleasure to come to the beautiful mountain city, Chongqing, to attend the World Export Development Forum. First of all, on behalf of the Ministry of Commerce, I would like to extend heartfelt congratulations to the hosting of this forum and warmly welcome distinguished guests. Chongqing is China's youngest municipality under the central leadership. Over the past 10 years, Chongqing's import and export increased by 18% annually, three times over the world's average trade growth. It is therefore meaningful to hold such a forum in this, this city in western China which embraces rapid growth of foreign trade. I would like to use this opportunity to talk about the contributions of international trade to the world economic development and China's foreign trade. In recent years, the international community has been working together to overcome hardships of current times and accomplished preliminary achievements in tackling financial crisis. International trade has witnessed the momentum of rapid growth and is also true for the world's economic recovery. This has fully demonstrated that international trade is a very important impetus for the recovery of the world's economy. Over the past 50 years, the average growth rate of world's exports was around 10% visibly higher than the world's economic growth rate and the growth rate of population in the world. In particular, in today's economic globalization, active participation in the international division of labor is good for the optimal composition of resources and also creating jobs. There are many countries in the world, including China, which, through development of trade, realized a sustainable and rapid growth of the economy. Over the past decades, the rapid development of world trade should be attributed to the hard work done by the international organizations such as the WTO and the UNCTAD. In 2009, affected by the financial crisis, global trade fell by 12%. But we haven't seen the emergence of tariff surge and beg thy neighbor policy, which was quite popular in the 1930s Great Recession. The solid multilateral trading system once again demonstrated its importance. In order to further ward off the negative impact of global financial crisis and pursue a stable recovery and growth of the world's economy, all the countries shall work together to maintain an open, just and fair multilateral trading system and bring the Doha round to an early conclusion. According to the estimate of the World Bank, the completion of the Doha round negotiations will create 160 billion US dollars worth of welfare and further solidify the foundation of world economic recovery. But unfortunately, we have seen that the trade protectionism is on the rise. In 2009, we have seen the non-tariff measures notified by the members of the WTO increased from 1272 in 2008 to 1489 in 2009, up by 17%. Apart from the traditional trade protectionism, some countries attempted to take unilateral measures such as carbon tariff duties and implement green protectionism in the name of tackling climate change. In 2009, China's exports accounted for only 9.6% in the world's total. But China was subject to 40% of the world's total anti-dumping measures and 75% of the world's total countervailing measures. And 
43% of the world's total trade defense investigation cases. China has become the major target of, of trade protectionism. Here, I would like to once again call upon relevant countries to implement the consensus reached by the G20 leaders and avoid taking new trade restriction measures and strongly oppose trade protectionism in all the manifestations. Ladies and gentlemen, over the 32 years of China's reform and opening up, China's foreign trade has witnessed rapid and sustainable growth, with the annual growth rate as high as 17 percent, much higher than the economic growth rate. And China has become the second largest trading nation in the world. China is consistently adhering to open trade policy and a balanced international pay payments, never pursuing trade surplus. While maintaining rapid exports, we also increase imports. Now China is accelerating the economic restructuring and increase domestic demand. This has created more opportunity, export opportunities for other countries and made our own contributions to the world's economic recovery. According to the WTO statistics, when the world's trade dropped, the imports of U.S. and the EU dropped respectively by 16.5 percent and 14.5 percent, whereas China's imports increased by 2.8 percent, which was the only major economy whose imports witnessed positive growth. For the first seven months, China's imports increased by 47.2 percent. Eleven point six percentage points higher than the exports growth rate, thus reducing by twenty one percent trade surplus. In the meanwhile, China is becoming a very important trading partner for other developing countries. China is taking various measures to strengthen our economic trade relations with other developing countries and granting the least developed countries zero tariff treatment to over 95 percent of all the, their tariff lines and helping with all sincerity increase their the capability of economic development and reduce the impact of the financial crisis on them. The UNCTAD report released in June pointed out that the total trade between China and Africa was doubled over the past five years. A strengthening of economic and trade relationship is good for developing African countries to diversify their economies and increase their productivity. Ladies and gentlemen, although China's foreign trade grew relatively fast over the past 30 strong years and accomplished some achievements in economic growth, China is still a developing country. According to the UN standard of $1 per day, China is still having around 150 million population living under the poverty line. So China's first priority is to ensure that the domestic issues are properly handled so as to achieve a stable and relatively fast economic growth. We will continue with the open trade policy and share with all the other countries the benefits of economic globalization. In closing, I would like to express my thanks to the ITC. For a long time, the ITC is dedicated to developing cooperation with developing countries, helping them formulate effective trade promotion plans, expanding exports and, and improving imports for developing countries and providing a huge amount of people, material and technical support for sustainable development. I still remember 18 years ago, the ITC gave a small project which helped China's Yunnan flower exports, pulling up the development of 
China's local economy. So I would like to propose that with a warm applause, we express congratulations and thanks to the International Trade Center for their work and accomplishments. My thanks also go to Chongqing Municipality for the efforts for the success of this forum. Finally, I wish this forum a complete success. Thank you.